You're going to love this exhibition. Even if you've seen it already, you're going to love Vic Mooney's Extraordinary. It's a really special show. This is our first gallery tour in over a year. Woo! Woo! That's right, that's right. The Museum of Art is coming back full force. I'm very grateful to have you all here. I'm Dr. Kenneth Hartvigson. I'm the curator of American art, and uh, it's just really my pleasure to welcome you to the MOA and to spend a few minutes with you today talking about this very special exhibition, Vic Mooney's Extraordinary. Now, with Vic Mooney's, there's, I think, one central idea that he's just fascinated by, and that is the magic of artistic transformation. Through art, one thing can sort of magically become something else. And so that is something that he has spent his entire career playing with, is how far can we push that level of transformation? His biggest invitation, if, if Vic is issuing one invitation to us as artistic viewers, it is, look again. I feel like that's what he is always inviting us to do, to look again. Because I guarantee you, when you look at a Vic Mooney's work for the first time, you are not seeing everything that is there to see. But first, we have this kind of joke reaction, right? Oftentimes we see Vic, there's a level of humor, and the humor is very present throughout this entire show. So you see the Mona Lisa in peanut butter jelly, and it's funny, and it's fun, and it's creative. And then you look more closely, again, remember that's the kind of major invitation from Vic, look again, right, look more closely, and you think about how hard that must have been. When we look at something from Vic Mooney's, it mean we might initially have a reaction of humor, and then we might look again, and we might realize there's some real artistic craft there, and then we might look yet again, and we might think about this idea of consuming images, and what makes the Mona Lisa special, and is it more special than peanut butter and jelly? Right? I mean, does it have a bigger impact in our lives? Probably not in my life, I have two young children, peanut butter and jelly is a big thing. When I look at this artwork, it does all of the things I want a Vic Mooney's artwork to do. The first thing is, it seems funny to me, right? You take a Caravaggio, a very, you know, sort of high class artist that we would look up to in the art history textbooks, and then you make it out of garbage, right? That's already kind of a fun joke, right? That line between the cast off and the very special uh, and, and preserved material. And then you have, like I've said before, that idea of the technique, like imagining him on a scaffold, directing people from above. I'm just like, I can't believe that his mind works this way, that he can find how these bits and pieces fit together. And then I look again and have that third question of like, well, what more can I learn from this? And we think about this idea of Narcissus looking at his reflection. And then we realize that this is garbage. This is a reflection of us. This is the stuff that we use and that we throw away. This is the stuff that we fill our lives with, right? And so garbage is, in a certain way, a reflection of who we are. Well, here we have his sandcastles, and he decides to kind of tweak some of those things uh, a little bit. So this is indeed a castle made out of sand. So still using the most common material, right, that piece of beach sand. However, it's a drawing etched on a single grain of beach sand which he accomplished by working with scientists at MIT. So to, to etch this image of a castle on a grain of sand, a very common material, is anything but a common process. These are drawn with sugar. So all of the white you see is sugar, and he drew it with his hands on just a dark backing board. So just got like a black backing board, put the sugar down, and moved it around to create these, these portraits of the children. Now, these children he met, as I said, in St. Kitts. He was on the beach having a good time, and he would see these children on the beach, and he noticed that they weren't really playing in the water and swimming the way a lot of the other kids were. So he sort of went up and introduced himself and started talking to them. And he learned by talking with them that they worked on sugar plantations, that they and their families were workers on sugar plantations. And so, you know, they weren't having fun and playing with the kids because they were working all the time. He's playing with that idea of the, the sweet and maybe the sour, right? taking the sweetness out of life, right? These, these children and these families who are working in this very difficult way and having these difficult lives so that we can have the sweetness of sugar. As we look at these toys that he uses, yes, he's using them for color. Yes, he's using them for the shading. But even the toys themselves tell stories of division. Even with the toys, he's commenting the fact, on the fact that as children, we will just automatically divide ourselves into my side and your side my team and your team. And I think he's asking us these very deep and important questions. What is it in us as humans that even as children makes us want to see the world in terms of I am me and that means I am not you? So please take a look, please come again, but it was my pleasure to be with you and I hope you have a wonderful day.